Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Two very notable speeches by two very notable presidents. And both dicks got themselves into their fair share of trouble. Welcome to another episode of Films with Farrell. Well, folks, President's Day is right around the corner, and that can only mean one thing. Another day, another year of celebrating our founding fathers, an overwhelming majority of which we know nothing about. We never voted for. Uh, we weren't alive to witness anything about them. Uh, now, I'm sure Abe Lincoln was a big hit before electricity. I'm sure JFK rolled the fattest joints in the world. Uh, you know, but the hell with celebrating them. You know, I don't know anything about them. I wasn't alive for anything that they were about. Uh, so what do we do? Well, Films with Pharaoh has you covered because this year we decided to treat President's Day a little bit differently and actually honor our real presidents. You know, the ones that we spend a period of 60 to 120 minutes getting to know in a movie, the ones that you know and love, the ones that can kill a terrorist with a fucking machine gun or their bare hands, the ones that can prevent a natural disaster, the ones that can eliminate an alien invasion. Yeah, those fucking guys. Without further ado, folks, here are my top five movie presidents. Enjoy. All right, folks, so before we dive any deeper, I'm gonna need you to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the follow button, and share this shit around. Uh, we're trying to grow the channel as best we can, and that way you can also stay up to date on all things Films with Feral. So like we mentioned, we will be diving into the top five fictional presidents as told by Films with Feral. Uh, we will not be talking about real presidents portrayed by actors, so no Daniel Day-Lewis and Lincoln here. Again, we're talking about movies, so no House of Cards, no West Wing, no Designated Survivor. While I have a healthy respect for those shows, they ran for a very long time. We're talking about 60 to 120 minutes of just pure action. We love these people. Okay, coming in at number five. Now, when we talk about number five and we talk about U.S. presidents, I have to talk about Jack Nicholson as his role of President James Dale in Mars Attacks. Okay, Tim Burton movie, Jack Nicholson as the president. Healthy respect for Jack Nicholson. You can kind of boop. Uh, so obviously he's going to crack the top five list. Uh, no spoilers, but I mean, you have to watch the movie. I don't know if he'd necessarily be the best president, but he has to crack the top five just because he's Jack Nicholson alone. Coming in at number four. Now, this man has played the vice president in more movies than I can count on my hands and my toes. Uh, that is Morgan Freeman. Now, Morgan Freeman played the president in Deep Impact and Angel Has Fallen. Uh, Angel Has Fallen, the third installment of the Fallen trilogy, uh, next to Olympus Has Fallen and London Has Fallen. Morgan Freeman, vice president of both of those movies, becomes president in Angel Has Fallen. Absolute, like, no presidential list is complete without a Morgan Freeman. Coming in at number three, this dude just looks like he could be a presidential candidate just standing right there. Uh, Aaron Eckhart in Olympus Has Fallen and London Has Fallen. Now, Gerard Butler is the main ass kicker in these movies, but Aaron Eckhart definitely throws a couple punches. Uh, he gets the credit for just looking like a, a U.S. president for just, you know, throwing a couple bows, uh, especially in London Has Fallen. Uh, you know, not the strongest, but Aaron Eckhart definitely rounding out the top three. Coming in at number two. Now, number two and number one were toss-ups. But number two, Harrison Ford as President James Marshall in Air Force One. Get off my plane. Harrison Ford is on Air Force One literally the entire time. Shoots the pod down. His escape pod is just empty. He's there because he's a fucking badass and he is there just to take down a fucking terrorist organization. Okay, when you think of a U.S. president, I think of Harrison Ford just taking ass, just fucking whipping it, taking names. Uh, I mean, very presidential to begin with, but Air Force One, Harrison Ford, yes, please. And coming in at number one, should be no surprise here, Bill Pullman as President Thomas J. Whitmore in Independence Day. Dude is a badass. He has the presidential monologue. He has the presidential look. I mean, the monologue gives him the most points, but what even just separates him further, my dude jumps into one of the aircrafts and just goes to blow up these fucking aliens just with my boy Randy Quaid, 
okay? He's not afraid to get his hands dirty and just blow up an entire alien species. Shout out to Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum as well. But uh, when I think of the top of my list on who I want to be my president, on who I want to jump into an aircraft and just fucking blow up some aliens, Bill Pullman, without a doubt, thank you, Mr. President. And that's all she wrote here, folks. Those are the top five movie presidents. Uh, vote for every single one of them. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. What are your top five movie presidents? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know why. You know, do you think maybe... Harrison Ford should get above Bill Pullman for some strange reason. Put it down below and maybe check yourself into a hospital because I think you're fucking crazy. Um, check it out in the comment section below, guys. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Happy President's Day. Happy every other day. Go watch some movies. Have some fun. Pew.